Hi all. In this video, I want to tell you about a contradiction, a weird example about connected sets that defies intuition, but also is a very classical example that you should definitely understand if you want to understand connectivity. So it's called the topologist sine curve. It's defined as you take zero, you take this closed interval in the plane, zero times minus one to the one, and you def take the graph of sine one over x, say restricted on zero one. And what it looks like is you have some oscillations from the sine that initially are relatively mild, but then the oscillations start being more rapid or high, the frequency increases as you approach zero because one over x is going off to infinity. So the different, yeah. And why you're adding this part is you want a closed set. So this is the closure of the graph, if you want to think of it that way. So it turns out now this space is actually connected. And w why this is a weird example is that if you take a point, if you take a point along this curve, the graph, then there is a way of connecting them to by a curve, namely you follow the graph. If you take two points on the vertical line segment, then they can also be connected to each other. But if you take a point on the vertical line segment and the point on the graph, then there is no direct way of connecting them because of these oscillations. There's no finite length curve that would accomplish this. And no other curve would be continuous because it would have to oscillate arbitrarily in this vertical line segment, in this graph part, because the sign is forcing that to oscillate. However, in terms of our definition, so this is not path connected. But it is still connected. And for this, it's the most, that's why it's particularly important for understanding our discussion about connectivity. So, the reason is that if you try to cover this somehow with a U and V, then the only way essentially would be that all of this part, because this is itself a connected part, would be contained in U. But if all of it is contained in U, there is no space for this set V because it has to be open. So actually all the, also the interval has to be contained in U. So everything has to be contained in U. That's the intuition and making it rigorous is a little painful. But one argument is uh, so we want to show, so we start from the definite, uh, that we have an open cover by disjoint sets that are not empty, that contain everything, all the points. Uh, actually, let's just say they're open. We don't even assume we do a direct proof, not a contradiction proof. Uh, so and what we want to show is that E is contained in U or E is contained in V. So all of the points in E are contained in one of these sets. And by disjointness, the other one doesn't even intersect the set. Now we want to identify which it is. So one of these has to contain some point because it covers E. So if we take the point 0, 0, then either P is in U or P is in V. So we start off with this point on this vertical line. And we know that that is either in U or V. Something is covered. So let's suppose U, P is in U. P is in V is a symmetric case, so it's identical. So it's enough to consider actually the U case. Now let's make these parts rigorous. So we have the vertical line segment. Then the main point is in U and we have a, there is no boundary points, so that will force all of these points on this line segment to belong into you. We're trying to show that everything belongs into you, so first we argue about the line segment. Well, how do we do that? We find a curve, curve that is just a parameterization of this line segment. So it maps minus one, one into E by sending T to zero T the point zero T, which is contained in E, the Y component is T. Now this is continuous 
its components y is continuous so it is continuous and let's look at the pre-images of u and v well these are disjoint open sets and they cover that well why because they cover e so they cover every point has to belong to either u or v but the pre-image but that but since you have connectivity of the domain minus one to one and this is the same argument as in involved in the proof of path connectivity implying connectivity is that the pre-image of one of them actually has to be everything and why is it u so it's either u or v pre-image has to cover everything but it has to be u because we know that this is not empty because zero is contained there the y because zero zero was contained in u so there was a point contained there. okay so we get that all of this vertical line segment is in u now we have the squiggly part so we have to talk about the squiggly or wiggly part now the idea for that one is that you have this point at u a small neighborhood u is open so a small neighborhood of points all belong into there so let's see, apply the definition. U is open, so there exists a delta such that a neighborhood belongs into U. But you have this wiggly part. It includes a sequence along the x-axis that converges to the point. So there exists a sequence Pn given by 1 over n pi sine n pi, which is equal to 0. So this is equal to 1 over n pi comma 0. This converges to 0, zero, zero as n goes to infinity. So for n large enough, we know that pn, they are in P de, pb delta, because it's converging. And all the points are in E, so we know that it's also in E. So it belongs into E intersect U. So because it belongs into E intersect U, because all the points here belong into U, then pn also belongs into U. But so because U and B are disjoint, it doesn't belong into E. So, so it could no, but we don't need to say that. And then we now we find one point along the squiggly part that's in U. But again, this is a curve. So we apply the argument again to say that all of the curve has to be in there. So we define the curve zero to one such that T maps to T sine of one over T. So gamma is continuous because its components are continuous. Notice that I strategically avoided zero. Gamma pre-image of U and gamma pre-image of V, again, are open sets that cover the half open intervals from zero to one. And since gamma inverse of zero is empty, why is that? Because uh, one over NP, N pi is in that. In there because, so because PN is in U, what we have is that uh, 1 over n pi is in gamma inverse of u because gamma of 1 over n pi is equal to pn by definition of pn. So we know that because it's a non-empty set and we have these two non-empty open sets that cover this connected space and they're disjoint again, then it has to be all of the half open interval 0 to 1. So we get that all of this is Zero one is contained in the pre-image of U. Therefore, if we take images, we make it that all the points in the image are contained in U. And that means that, what is the image? The image is exactly the points in the wiggly part. So you take X uh, sine one over X for X in the open interval zero a half open interval zero to one. But that means, so we concluded in the first part that the vertical line, line segment is in there. And the second part, we concluded that all of the wiggly part is in there. So the union of the two things, which is equal to E, is also contained in U because both parts individually are. So the whole set is contained in U. And that is what we wanted to show when we wanted to verify connectivity because we showed that either E is in U or E in this B. In this case, E is in U because the point there is one point in U. If P was in V, then E would be a subset of V and would be done. The proof is a little technical, but what you should take out of this is that you start from assuming that you can cover the set U and V 
and then you start using the structure of the set to somehow say that everything has to actually be in one of the sets. You can also try to contradict the fact that they are not empty. That's another way of doing it. Or that they're not, no, they don't have non-empty energy. 